Hello, my name is Nate with Long Range X, and today I wanted to talk about hunting rifles. I don't don't know if you're planning on going elk hunting or antelope hunting and crossing a bunch of country or going over the mountains and chasing mule deer. I'm not sure what you're into, but I'm seeing a huge trend in heavy competition rifles or heavier rifles that should be left at competitions or on target ranges being promoted as hunting rifles. More and more I'm seeing the weight of hunting rifles go up. I don't care whether you're hunting with a 6.5 PRC or 6.5 284 or 338 Lapua. Um, the cartridges aren't what we're talking about today themselves. What 95% of the time, if someone says I'm going on a mule deer hunt or an antelope hunt or an elk hunt, what rifle should I get? They're referring to what cartridge should I get? And there's so many custom made rifle makers out there and so many factory rifle builders out there that are building nice, good, honest hunting rifles and yet the ones that are being pushed off are the heavier style bench rifles. I'm seeing a lot of extremely bull barrels out there and 28 inch barrels. And I'm seeing 14, 15 pound elk rifles. I'm, I'm seeing, you know, 14, 15 pound mill deer rifles. And the more and more you pack a rifle like that, the more and more you'll realize you've made a mistake by buying a rifle like that. Those kind of rifles are fine for your every average day truck hunter. But for someone who's actually putting in the miles and the distance to get a nice buck or get a nice bull or maybe their first bull moose or something. Yet you were lucky enough to draw one of them tags or you're <clears throat> going to go hike over in Alaska and make a trip. You know, you don't want to be packing a rifle like that. Kimber makes a Kimber Mountain Ascent rifle and in 280 Ackley or in cartridges like that, some they make it in some belted magnums as well. They're accurately shooting those rifles um, under an MOA, sub MOA, at a thousand yards. And they're light six pound rifles, probably seven and a half pounds with a decent scope. It doesn't take a big heavy target rifle to go elk hunting with or mill deer hunting or whatever you're doing and i'm seeing a big trend of these and what makes me um upset about this is you take a big rifle like that and, and you put up an eight inch plate at 100 yards pie plate and i bet you offhand if you hold that rifle up, I bet you 50% of the people that are hunting with those rifles couldn't shoot them offhand and hit that plate consistently at 100 yards three times. They're in, I mean, really group with it. You might get a corner. The thing about it is, is that hunting rifles used to be fast swinging rifles. They used to be lightweight rifles. And I'm really seeing a trend of bench rest rifles that don't belong in the field being promoted to new hunters or new shooters and i don't think that that's the way we should be doing things a nice lightweight rifle with today's technology the the panic of lightweight rifles used to be recoil now almost every rifle has a muzzle brake on it earplugs are cheap i often say that um, most all rifles are equipped with muzzle brakes. Lightweight rifles are all over in factory rifles or custom made rifle configurations. Most of these gun builders are getting darn good at building lightweight hunting package rifles. Lighter weight. Now me personally, I like my rifles scoped, ready to go around nine and a half, ten 10 pounds. That's where I like them myself but i don't mind packing an extra pound and a half or so of weight or two pounds of weight 
but you take somebody that's newer into hunting and learning how to swing a rifle and learning how to hunt, that's not really fair to them. If they walk over a ridge and there's a milder down below them and they have to figure out how to get prone and then you can't see the animal or what have you, say this buck's at 80 yards, they're going to lose that opportunity. Whereas with an honest hunting rifle, you could get a shot off in standing position if you had practice and you were confident doing so. I'm also seeing a trend in extremely high-powered rifle scopes that have great high-end opportunity but very little low end opportunity. I don't I think that I think that eight power and sometimes even six power is a little high on the high end, on the bottom end for a hunting rifle because things happen. You come up on a downed animal and it gets up at a closer range in the timber or something like that or you're walking through the timber heading to a clear cut and there's an elk standing in front of you that stands up at sixty yards and you surprise each other or something like that. I think that's getting pretty excessive on the low end on these scopes. This video isn't to badmouth anybody or advertise a gun. This is just something I'm seeing a lot of. I'm seeing a lot of these heavy magazine fed rifles being promoted as hunting rifles. And if you've ever hunted with one with a rifle sling, when you're going uphill or downhill, you'll realize the whole time you're walking with that rifle slung over your shoulder, that magazine's sitting there sticking you in the back, and it's less than comfortable. You get a 28-inch um, number 6 barrel, and you get a heavy 3.5-pound stock for it. Then you put a 2.5-pound scope on it, and you get this rifle up around 16 pounds. <clears throat> that's not an exaggeration there's a lot of them out there and then you you got to put a bipod on it so you can shoot it accurately and eventually what what you have is a bench rest rifle out in the field hunting with you so before you go out and buy a rifle for hunting take a good solid look around at some of the other options and if you guys would like me to show you some other options personally um, that I that I can, um, I can't afford to show them all to you. I wish I could. But if you'd like to like me to hand you and or show you some videos of some other options out there, we can do that. Just leave a comment down below, and I'll make some more videos on this subject. I've got sixteen pound rifles, and I've got seven pound rifles, and I've got every weight in between. The only difference is, is you don't see me hunting with the 16 and a half, 17 pound rifles. You see me hunting with the lighter ones because I get pretty tired of lugging something like that around, especially after a long, hot day of hiking. It really starts to wear on you. So the only point of this video was to educate some of our newer shooters on what to be looking for. There's some nice rifles out there. Tico's making some great ones. Kimber's making some great ones. That don't weigh a whole hell of a lot, but Gare is making some pretty decent lightweight rifles that are worth taking a solid look at if if you're not going to dump the money into a custom, um, which I dump a lot of money on custom made rifles. They're kind of like little sports cars to me. I highly enjoy them, but there are other options. And uh, so please let me know what you think in the comments. Let me let me know your favorite elk rifle or favorite mildew rifle, and. Uh, let me know if you want to see some of my lighter end hunting rifles. Like always, you, this is Nate with Long Range X, and thank you for watching, and God bless America.